Coming up, more and more Muslims in this country are financing their homes according to Islamic law, which forbids paying interest. Here at home, amid all the losses in the banking and housing worlds, there is one conspicuous exception. It's the Islamic practice of doing business without charging or paying interest on a loan. Throughout the recession so far, Islamic financing has been growing at 10 to 15 percent a year. Lucky Severson has the story. This is a nice size. Not too long ago, it would have been almost impossible for General and Candace Sutton to buy a home without violating their faith. They are both devout Muslims who want to finance their new home by following Islamic law, known as Sharia, which forbids paying interest. The question. Ibrahim Warday is a professor at Tufts Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy. He teaches a class that's increasingly popular on Islamic banking and finance and says it was the Prophet Muhammad, himself a merchant, who condemned the practice of charging or paying interest, called riba in Arabic. There used to be a very common practice uh, of, uh, of, of riba, which was a periodic doubling uh, of, uh, of the interest. So in other words, if you owed money and were unable to pay it, then it'll have to be doubled. And uh, the whole process would end with enslaving the debtor. So with the advent of, uh, of Islam, there was an end to that practice. This is Guidance Residential in Reston, Virginia, one of a growing number of companies catering to Muslim home buyers by devising ways to finance mortgages without levying interest charges. Candace and General plan to finance their home through Guidance. Hussam Qutub is the Director of Communications for Guidance, which has financed more than 5,000 home purchases since 2002. If for some reason the property values, just as we're seeing today, decrease, and we're stuck with uh, proceeds that are not even close to what we're owed on our share, we won't pursue our partner. Uh, we won't pursue their savings accounts. We won't go after uh, their personal assets. There are other significant differences. For instance, the late fee at guidance is never more than $50. Sharia mortgage holders are also less likely to default on their payments. The, the logic of the Sharia is that the losses should be shared by both the, the borrower and, and the lender. But it is definitely a sin to be able to repay and yet not to, not, not to repay it. When Zulika Hussein and her husband and four kids were relocated to Northern Virginia, she was aware of Sharia financing, but her husband's company required that the family use conventional financing. Zulika decided to refinance the house the Sharia way so she could perform the fifth pillar of Islam, the pilgrimage to Mecca, with a clear conscience. It's recommended that you are free of debt before you make that pilgrimage. That's why a majority of the Muslims prefer not to get into that particular situation. Sharia financing and investments are still only a tiny portion of the financial market, but growing. For Religion and Ethics News Weekly, I'm Lucky Severson in Ashburn, Virginia.